Linda Walker uh, joins us, uh, part of the leadership team at Buckeye Farms Association, member of the NRA's Board of Directors and a licensed realtor in the uh, state of Ohio. Linda, thank you for your time today. It's good talking with you. Oh, thanks for having me on, Cam. My pleasure. Um, I, I saw a story out of uh, Marion, Ohio, a, a woman who was sexually assaulted, a, a realtor who was sexually assaulted, uh, writing about uh, what happened to her so that it doesn't happen to other people. Um, and it was, you know, it's a horrible story, uh, Linda. And there were a couple of things that I, I, I picked up on. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the realtor in question, she had a firearm with her, but as she talks about, it doesn't matter what tool you have if you're not aware of your surroundings. Absolutely. Um, this actually happened in Zanesville, Ohio, on November 28th. Uh, Zanesville is eastern Ohio, about 40 minutes from me. And she was uh, locking up a vacant home, which <laughs> there's so many vacant homes out there. And the couple things that caught me in this article when they interviewed her, and, uh, you know, my thoughts and prayers most definitely go out to her, um, she was talking about being aware of her surroundings, and this guy, who I take it she was not representing as a buyer, um, he came up behind her, grabbed her, and shoved her into the house, and uh, threw her to the floor down on her stomach. And she never got a good look at him, and what she had said, she goes, you know, I was not aware of my surroundings. And the other thing that uh, caught my eye in the article was she was talking about if the hair stand up on the back of your neck and this is something I talk about in my concealed carry classes and um, you know I, I pray to God she wasn't one of my students because a lot of the things in which she said are things that I tell my students you know there's women's intuition and if it doesn't feel right we need to listen to that intuition you know, that's, that's actually a really good point, Linda, because uh, oftentimes we do get that, just that sense, right? Um, and, and maybe we tell ourselves, ah, oh, you're being crazy, whatever. But but really, if it doesn't feel right, if something just feels off, uh, then get out. Better, uh, you know, better safe than sorry. Um, what, what, what can you do in that case? Let's say you've made arrangements to meet a client uh, at, at a home. All of a sudden, it just doesn't feel okay. Uh, is it okay to call the client uh, and say, look, I, I'm, I'm sorry, can we, can we reschedule? Can you come by the office? I'm running behind. Uh, can I meet you at the office instead? Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, we need to control the situation. Um, I know the National Association of Realtors, they, you know, generally want us to meet the client at our office first. And, you know, unfortunately, that's not the reality of our business. Um, my office is 15 miles away from my home. I may be showing a house 15 miles in the other direction. Mm -hmm. The reality is I'm not going to drive to my office to meet the person first. Um, you know, <laughs> carrying a firearm, although it didn't help her in this situation because it was knocked away from her, um, training, 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 and get some more training about gun retention um, uh, being aware of your surroundings. We talk about always being in condition yellow, as uh, Colonel Jeff Cooper wrote the color code, codes of awareness. And, um, you know, we need to know, is there going to be somebody sneaking up? And there's so many vacant properties on the market for the last <laughs> numerous years, you know, us realtors are going into properties we've never been in. We don't know the floor plan. So the best thing we can do is, you know, look for the exits, try to keep ourselves in between the exit and the person that we're with. And, um, you know, you can never fully trust anyone. So... That's my advice. <laughs> <laughs> and in the meantime, uh, present a smiling face and uh, try to close that deal. I mean, because you know, I mean, that's this is this is such a difficult position for for realtors because, as you say, you're putting yourself out there. You are uh, in a very vulnerable situation. I know, uh, thinking back to when uh, my wife and I were looking 
uh, at homes, uh, we would, you know, we, we, we had a couple of routes. We had a realtor, but we would also go to some open houses, yeah. uh, which were, you know, out in the country uh, and, and, you know, fairly remote locations. And now that I think about it from that perspective, you are in a very uh, a vulnerable situation. Um, you know, what about does the does the buddy system ever come into play uh, in a situation like that? Uh, if you know that you've got to go somewhere, uh, and and you're you're a little concerned, do you ever invite another realtor or ask another realtor, "Hey, can you come along?" Well, properties in which you know I just have a really bad feeling about. Um, my husband will drive down with me. You know, he'll stay in okay. the vehicle or whatever. Um, uh, some realtors do get other realtors to go with them. But, again, uh, you know, reality of the business is there isn't always going to be somebody available to go with us. And uh, I would like to see the National Association of Realtors um, try to push that all realtors, uh, first and foremost, Force the potential buyer to go get a pre-approval first. You know, if they're serious about buying a house, they're going to go to a lender. They're going to get a pre-approval. And if 100% across the board, realtors would quit showing houses to people who have not gotten pre-approved because they've taken those steps t- telling you, yeah, I'm serious about buying a house now. Mm-hmm. Instead of random, you know, Joe Blow calls me on the phone and goes, hey, I want to see this house, you know, in a half an hour from now. Right. So we really need to police ourselves as an industry. Um, Everybody needs to come together and do the same practices time and again. Is this a uh, a topic, Linda, that realtors are are still talking about? I mean, I imagine obviously uh, uh, there in Ohio where you are, it is. But we also had the case of the uh, realtor in Arkansas yeah. uh, a few months ago who was abducted and and murdered. And I know that there were a lot of stories then about realtors uh, who were going and getting their concealed carry license. Is, is this something that 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 you guys are talking about again, or is this a topic that never goes really goes away? It never goes away. Uh, I was on with you when the Arkansas realtor was murdered, and I had a lot of phone calls from a lot of realtors following up after that who wanted to take a CCW class. I've trained a lot of people in our industry. Uh, You know, and it's unfortunate that it takes something like this for people to think about their safety. You know, three months from now, if nothing's happened, everybody you know, relaxes and they go back into their apathetic little world. And in this industry, because we are meeting strangers in strange places, we need to think about this all the time, just not when something bad happens. Talking with Linda Walker, a licensed realtor, member of the NRA's board of directors, part of the Buckeye Farms Association leadership team. And uh, I guess last question for you, Linda, if there are realtors out there in Ohio who are listening, uh, you know, are, are you still offering uh, concealed carry courses? And, and are realtors uh, that you talk to, are they interested uh, in uh, getting their concealed carry license? Yeah, they're interested. Um, in their, if they're in central Ohio, they can contact me, L. Walker at BuckeyeFirearms.org. Um, if they're in other parts of the state, uh, you can go on to BuckeyeFirearms.org, and we've got a list of instructors in all of 88 counties. So, um, yeah, I'm, they, I've trained a lot of people uh, who are realtors, loan officers, home inspectors, appraisers. We're all in the same boat here. Yeah, absolutely. Linda, listen, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you coming on the show, and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and uh, get to spend it with your family. Absolutely. My soldier is coming home. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. So, okay, Merry Christmas, Cam. And Merry to Christmas to you, too. Linda Walker with us here uh, on NRA News, Cam and Company.